guys, I'm Danny, and this is the fourth episode of The Daily Grind. I'm here with my very special guest, Mati Ajavon. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> so you played with the Atlanta Dream. Yep. What was your time like in the WNBA? Uh, my time was great. You know, it, it was, um, you know, uh, ups and downs. Uh, overall, I think I had a great career. Uh, of course, I'm not done playing, but, um, you know, it's been a great time thus far. Okay, what are some things you learned during your time in the league that you didn't know going into the WNBA? Um, I, I think it's always a learning process. Um, the one thing that I know for sure now is you always have to take care of your body. That's probably one of the most important things. And it's funny because the vets try to tell you, and then when I became a vet, you know, it's like, ow. And then I try to tell a younger crowd, either a younger girl. So it's, I think that's probably one of the most important things. Okay, is there anything you would do differently? I mean, obviously take care of your body, but are there any other things that you would do differently going into it? If you knew, if you know, knew then what you know now? Um, yeah, probably would've got more sleep. <laughs> um, but it's, like I said, it's part of the learning curve, it's part of the process, and you know, everybody has to do what they have to do to, um, you know, definitely get the longevity of their career. What are your thoughts on the current state of the WGA right now? I think it's great. I think, you know, we're getting more notoriety. Um, I think uh, there's more talks about what's going on. Um, as far as the quality when it comes to women's sports. Um, I also think the talent is getting better and better. Like I take a player like Dominique Shields, you know, who since she was little and the upcoming talent, like also the college players, um, you know, Taya Cooper, you take Taya who's at South Carolina had her off, you know, she got injured last year, but she's coming with, <laughs> yeah. she's coming this year. And um, then you also take the high school girls that are doing their thing. I just feel like the whole level of basketball is getting better and better. So you talk about the equality. Yeah. That's been a topic that's been discussed a lot lately. What are your thoughts or maybe your feelings on salaries in the WNBA and just that equal pay and equal opportunities? Um, I think it's the same thing uh, as Skyler, as you know, Barry Brittany Rhino voices her opinion. Uh, I think it's the same thing. We work as hard, if not harder. Um, we're doing the same thing, if not more, plus going overseas. Um, and equally, I think it toils down to these younger girls too, um, because it's an issue when these younger girls aren't watching. It's an issue when younger girls want to, they desire to play in the WNBA, yet you can't name a player. So I take fault on us two. Um, and that's why I try to get out here um, with these high school players, with these younger girls, and you know try to bridge the gap between WNBA players and the high school players. Because in order for us to get to that next level, we can't rely on we can't rely on guys to watch our sport. <laughs> it has to be us supporting us as well, you know? Um, and basketball is basketball at the end of the day. Half the people that talk smack can't beat anyone in the <laughs> WNBA. So, you know, people are gonna talk. Right. And that's all you can just let them know. It's funny because most of the people who say stuff aren't the NBA, NBA they, players. It's oh, the they're guys. terrible. Yeah. They're terrible. <laughs> it's the guys who just love the NBA. But they're they're terrible. terrible. Yeah. That's but hey, mean. they even talk smack of LeBron James. So, oh, I mean, at the end of the day, opinions are opinions. So, you are a vet here in WNBA. Is that like, this, has that sunk in? Like, you're a vet. I mean, it's it's something, um, and I'm definitely appreciative to last 10 years in the league. A lot of players can't say that. Um, I've learned a lot from the players that come before me. Um, I always tell the story about how when I was younger, uh, I desired to play in the WNBA. I watched those players, Cynthia Cooper. I watched uh, Lisa Leslie. I watched Mawada Mubika solely because Mawada Mubika was one of the African players in the league, and I was like, man, you know, like that's who I want to be, you know. And I had the opportunity to play on her team, so that was huge for me. Um, but like I said, it comes from a younger age, and 
desiring to be at that level and fulfilling those dreams. So I can't say anything, but you know, my career has been successful. With you being a vet, do some of the younger players come to you for advice? All the time, and I be trying to tell them to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what advice do you give them? Um, you know, especially the ones who want to see that ten-year, you know, longevity. They want to have a successful career, not only in the WBA but also overseas. I just tell them, let your game talk. You know, let your game talk. Just outwork everybody. Um, be consistent. Um, don't worry about the playing time. Sometimes we all. I've been there where I was playing a whole lot of minutes then not playing minutes. You gotta be able to be a team player at times. You're gonna be a star, but you also gotta be able to sit on that bench and clap it up for somebody else. So I think that's like one of the most important things um, and just being supportive. So yeah. What's some things you have going on now? You didn't play this past year in yeah. the WBA, yeah. but you've been doing things in the community and like you said, just trying to develop those younger players and kind of bridge that gap. What have you been doing off the court? Um, so like I said, I have been doing a lot. Um, I started a scouting company where I help uh, international and domestic girls here in the United States get into college. So um, of course, everybody knows how the scouting company goes. And if you don't, it's like, you know, the AAU circuit and watching games and basically helping these players get scholarships. Um, that's basically it. I also have a training company, as you see, with my hat as Javon Elite, which, you know, I partner with here at Brown Middle School. Every weekend we have, um, you know, two different sessions where we train kids to get better. You know, we train on basketball, agility, you know, every now and then I'll bring in, um, you know, young people to allow them to know how to do yoga. Just things that I feel like they need. Um, and I also try to teach them life lessons. You know, uh, I think the best experience is teacher, is teacher. I think the best teacher is experience. So I just try to take everything that I know and, you know, show them the ropes. Okay, so how how do people become a part of Ajavon Elite basketball? Um, basically, you could go to AjavonElite.com and sign up. I have uh, various um, ways that you can join. So just head on to the website and, you know, click on the buttons and I'll see you <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you still working out? You still, you know, yeah, grinding? Yeah, I'm definitely still grinding. Um, I'm not working out every day like I used to when I was playing, but, you know, I definitely plan on playing in the WNBA this season. I'll put it out there. Um, and I just think, uh, with the brand and everything that I'm doing, uh, it's it falls full circle because I want these kids to be able to embrace what I'm doing now and show them like, hey, it is okay to take a mental break for yourself. It is okay to um, step back from the game and reevaluate re everything. It is okay to you know put yourself in a space where you want to create because my basic thing is. We are more than athletes, you know, and if we're not able to uh, take what we gain, whether it's relationships, networks, from the game of basketball and add it and create something else, then I don't think we're doing it right. What is that professional grind like though? Cause you know, you hear about like, you gotta grind to get to college and you get to college and you gotta grind to get to the WNBA or to you know to that professional level but once you get there you know what's that is it different like is the grind different and you putting in more work like how is it I think it's definitely different it's the difference between being in a league a couple of years and being in a league for 10 plus years um it's consistency is being able to take your talent and contribute that every night you know so um it's like a team is expecting you to do things where it's not a guessing game you know, and that's the thing that I think these, you know, younger players have to tell you. You can't just show up one day and, you know, average 30 points and then disappear. Now you're, you know, people tend to look for you for those things. And it doesn't have to necessarily mean you have to score points. Okay, get some rebounds, get some steals, just contribute to the game. So um, I just think uh, that grind is overall something that you have to be consistent with at all times. 
what are some of the things that you've taken away from your long career in basketball um, that you hope to pass down to these girls that you train and that you inspire? Um, I think uh, give more than you receive. Um, and that's with basketball too, give more um, than expected. Uh, it's times where a lot of players feel as if, oh, I'm this and I'm, you know, I'm bigger than life. But, you know, any situation can humble you, humble you real quick. So that's the person I am. Um, I never take anything for granted. I never take people for granted. I know that life is short. Basketball is just probably 20% of life. It's so much bigger than, um, than what it is. Um, so if you're a great person, uh, it reflects with the people around you and you receive more. So that's a lot. Three things that make a great point guard. Number one, you gotta have great vision. Nobody likes a point guard who can't see. Number two, you have to be unselfish. A point guard is probably one of the most important positions on the floor, and your teammates have to be able to expect you to deliver to them. Number three, you gotta have some ball handling. If you can't handle the ball, you ain't no point guard. I'm on the court with Matisse. She gonna show me her three favorite moves. Yeah. So, one of my favorite moves is called the Tim Harder Rack. So, we're gonna do the Tim Harder Rack move, all right? So it's basically, so it's a twin and land approach, all right? So it's here, here. But the point to get it like off is to do it really fast. So it's more like this, all right? And you're going. <laughs> Today, I was kicking it with Girls Grind. 